Hey guys, welcome to Indie Game Hustle. My name is Charles, and in this video, we're going to create a very quick game over scene for our player. In our last video, we were working on this here, uh, main menu, and it's it's working. It's working pretty basic. Uh, it's basically doing basic things. It's doing what it needs to do. Um, but now we need to kind of trigger a game over scene for our player. So what I'm going to do is head over to the base scene where our player is waiting for us here. All right, and then I will go ahead and get somewhere close into the scene. And uh, here we go. Great. And we're actually not going to be in this scene to create the game over scene, but um, we're actually going to be using this. So, all right, so we, we have our player. Let's go ahead and remember where we're at with our player. It's been, a, I guess, a couple videos since we've been in here. So. Our scene starts, fades into play, great, looking great. Almost looking like a full game now, right? Um, we have our enemies here. We have no aiming yet, but um, I have something for that here that I'm uh, hopefully can get together for you guys soon. Seems like a pretty good way to do it, so I'll have that for you guys soon. But for now, we're gonna get this guy killed. All right, all right, so Right now, uh, we have our player, and as you can see in the top left, we have our life. And if I jump down here, remember we had our death sequence here. So he dies, um, and then it goes to a scene where it says remaining lives, which is great. It's very game-like, then it brings us back to the last checkpoint that I touched. And then I'm gonna go back into the game, and I'll just even touch this checkpoint. <laughs> And then I'm going to die again because, just because, because we're trying to show the point that when the player eventually dies, we only have one life left and it is important to fail sometimes, right? You got to fail sometimes, right? So as soon as we fail, boom, player died. That's it. That was your last life. But unfortunately, apparently remaining zero lives means you're still alive and we need to change that. So... Um, instead of this happening, uh, we need a trigger and we need a condition. And so we need to think about where that condition is going to be. So what we should do is probably take a look at the player. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go into our assets, prefabs, and everything is starting to grow, right? As we um, get further in this, we got characters and we have our player. And uh, I'm going to double click on the player. Now let's take a look at our death trigger, okay? All right, so we have a, a death trigger here and it's basically saying on attribute change, right? On decrease, have some conditions. And these conditions are, if this attribute player's health is less than zero, okay? And then it's gonna do these things. It's gonna subtract, it's gonna subtract from the player's lives. It's gonna do, um, uh, player died uh, message it's gonna do it's gonna assign our variables right it's gonna do all of these things for us right but what we want to do also is check for something else we want to check if if the player's life is zero and if the player's life is if the lives left is zero. So let's go ahead and open up the preferences and look at our variables that we have set. So the variable that we're going to need to check this on is probably our max lives or is it the, no, it's going to be our players lives. So this is the one we want to um, base it on. And I have a feeling this needs to be saved. So mark that saved. So just in case. All right, so players lives three. That number should decrease um, each time we die, and I just wanna confirm that, but uh, let me just make sure if I remember correctly. And it's okay if you don't remember everything that we set up. That's why there's videos, so you can go back. All right, cool. So we have players lives three, and of course if I grab this, it goes to four, but remember that condition says it can't go above seven. All right, if I go down, as soon as he dies, three. All right, great, so that's what that's all I wanted to check. So we know that that's what that number is, so it's gonna be 
player's lives. All right, so let's go into the player. I'm going to go to conditions. Now let's see how we can think this through. Okay, so if the attribute health is zero, do these things. Basically reduce the life, do all these things, yada, yada, yada. Now, if we add another condition and say, if the player's life is zero and something else, we might need to create a different variable. So or a different clause. So let's see here. Actually, hmm, I got an idea. What if we add a condition that says this? If the if the player's health is zero and the variable player's lives, right, is greater than zero, is greater than zero. Hmm. I can see where this can be a problem. Let's just see how it works. So the idea is it's going to check to see if their health is zero and if their lives is greater than zero, then it should reduce the life and do everything else. Else, we needed to do something here. So what I want to do here is put in a, a message. We can do a debug message, um, but let's just do a debug message because that's like the programmer way to do it, right? So I'm just going to put in a debug message and say, go to um, game over screen. All right, cool. So let's check to see if this works the way we think it is. And so I'm going to leave this over here and then I'm going to go back and let's go ahead and hit play. We need to die three times. And I could have just changed the variable to one so we wouldn't have to die three times, but why not? All right, cool. So jumping into the lake here or the water or the poison or the lava. Two. Great. Two. Great. All right. So next thing, let's see. Go back. Dang. Cool. So we're dead again. It's like a game of Overwatch. Sometimes we... <laughs> People throw games. They just jump off the edge. You're not going to win. <laughs> so, um, all right, cool. All right, so we're at one. So let's see. I don't think this is going to work. And the reason is we're currently at one, right? We have one life left. So let's see. If we hit, if we go down, it's going to take it to zero. All right, so now the theory is if we have one life left. Now, if I jump off, it should take me. It should give me a message in my debug screen. Go to game screen, game over screen, right? And it's going to keep falling because I'm supposed to go somewhere else. But here's the thing. I got to think that through because. And here's a question to you guys. Maybe maybe, you know, but. If you have one life left, does it mean you have one more time to die and then you have zero lives left? Is that how it works? I, I think it could work that way. Um, but let's I'm going to go and check something. I'm going to go to the player and uh, go to the player. I'm going to go to the conditions. And instead of zero, I'm going to say, hey, if if the player's life is greater than zero, greater than one, then do that. I feel like it's okay to have zero. Like, hey, you have no lives left, so this is it. You know, like, zero lives left. Hmm. I don't know. I guess it's, it's up for interpretation, so that's fine. Let's go ahead and um, just see how this feels. So I'm going to jump off again. and remaining lives and it's probably best i'm going to check another game and just see how they approach it 
player died. And so now we have one life left. So my idea is, man, I better not die again or it's game over. That's my thought process, right? That's literally what I'm thinking. So I'm going to move this here. And then when I fall off, go to, see, it's go to game over screen. That's what it does. So I think that feels right. I, I have a feeling that's the right way to go about it. So we're going to we're going to rock with that. Um, so basically, if you have one life left, you only have one life left. If you lose it, that's it. So that's the mentality we're going to go with. All right, cool. So now we need to create the game over screen. All right. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go ahead and save. If you haven't been saving, make sure you're saving your your game. And I haven't talked about like how to save your entire project. I'm not the best when it comes to saving entire projects. I'll be completely honest. Um, I don't use like a GitHub or anything like that. Um, I'll be honest. I've used it before in the past, but none of my current projects I've ever used a GitHub. I honestly am just literally copying a whole Unity folder and like saving versions of it in the cloud so that just in case I need to go back. So if you want to do it that way, you can do it that way. Um, but I would probably recommend a GitHub if you knew how to do it. I don't necessarily use it and know all the ins and outs of that. So that's a lesson for another day. So, all right. So I'm going to go ahead and go to Robot Boy. I'm going to go to World. And I'm going to go to Menu. And I'm going to consider this a menu. And I'm going to right click. And I'm going to create a scene. And we're just going to call this Game Over. That's it. Simple. Game over okay all right and so in this scene uh, let's make sure we saved all right i'm going to double click and in this scene um it's going to be super easy we're just going to right click in here we're going to go create a canvas and of course we're going to change this to scale with screen size i'm going to change this to 1920 by 1080 and uh, inside this canvas, I'm going to go ahead and create a panel, right? I'm going to double click on the canvas to bring it out. And uh, the forward is when the X is like this, I think. I think this is forward, if I'm not mistaken. I could be wrong. We'll find out here in a second. Now I'm going to right click on the panel. I'm going to go to UI. I'm going to go to TextMesh Pro. And just remember, I'm using TextMesh Pro, but um, like you can honestly use like like a Photoshop thing or an image or whatever you want. Um, again, this is not a graphical thing right now. We are literally setting up function. So I'm not going to get into that discussion just yet. All right. So um, I'm going to go ahead and make this large, like, I don't know, like 85. I'm even going to bold it just to make it cooler. And then I'm going to do like a straight game over. I'm even going to make the junk red just to be like real extra about it and be like a game over buddy you died I'm gonna make it even bigger because it needs to be painfully obvious and the background needs to be black because game over in black is like yo you died bro game over all right so that's a game over scene all right cool all right so this is a game over scene and so the idea is when you come to this scene it's like game over. Doom, doom, doom. We're going to have music. We're not dealing with any of that stuff now. We'll play with that stuff later. But you have some music, some sound effects, whatever. And then it's going to transition to the main menu. Okay. So you, we can do one or two things, right? We can, we can just have it on a timer. We can just be like game over after a few seconds. Um, we could have it on a, um, a button to, that you have to press. Right. To make it even make you feel even extra about dying. Like it can be like, oh, you got to hit this button if you want to try again. Right. So we're not going to do a button. Not now. Right now. Uh, we're just going to do a timer. So in this canvas, all I am going to do is add a trigger inside this canvas. Game creator trigger. Super simple on start. And uh, all I'm going to do is add a trigger for now An action. We're going to do a wait and uh, we can do, I don't know how many seconds we can do 60. We can do 
120. Um, that's why I'm thinking a button may be better. I think a button might work better. But for now, let's just go ahead and do like 10 seconds. And then we're going to do a load scene. And uh, we're going to put in our main menu. So I typically just try to copy it unless it's really simple. So in this case, it's pretty simple. Great. All right. So load game main menu. All right, cool. So I'm going to save, save this here. So even if I hit play here, if I just hit play, just like this. After how many seconds did I choose? 10. Um, after 10 seconds, it's going to, it should take us straight to the main menu. If I didn't, you know what, it's not going to do it. And again, this is the same uh, thing we did before. We didn't add the main menu to the, the build settings, right? So if you didn't do that, do it. So we have to have the build settings open. So we want to make sure the main menu is in the build settings. We need to make sure that the game over scene is in the build settings. Um, players live UI is there, base is there. Cool, I think we're good there. All right, um, and we're good. I think that's good. I hope everything is working out. All right, um, hit play. All right, cool. So I think after 10 seconds, and I think I already see, like I need to get rid of the little background because I don't want that that particular image has like a thing on it. So cool, after 10 seconds, it takes us back to this screen. Cool, because the game's over and it's like, yo, you need to start again. And it's perfect, that's what we want. All right, so uh, what I'm gonna do is go to this panel and get rid of this background so we don't have those edges there. Cool, and also I'm gonna change that time from 10 to five. I think a button will probably be adequate. I think that would be good. Um, I'm not gonna do a button right now. Should I do a button, guys? I think I'm gonna do a button. Let's put the button, why not, right? All right, so we're gonna go in the panel. I'm just gonna add a button. Matter of fact, we can have the button and the timer. Basically, we can go back to 10 seconds, and if you don't hit the button in 10 seconds, it's gonna take you back to the menu anyway. Perfect. All right, so let's do that. So I'm gonna go to UI, we're gonna go to the button, and I'm just gonna drop it down like so. Keep it simple. Change the text to, um, I don't know what we would call this. Like end, like start over, uh, go home. Actually, I don't know what you would name this button. Uh, let's see. Uh, main menu. We'll just call it main menu because I don't actually know if a button is necessary, but uh, yeah, we'll just call it main menu for now. And uh, just to make it even more devious, I'm just gonna, no, I'll just leave it like a white button, that's fine, whatever. And I'll make the button text a little bigger. Cool, all right, that works. And on this button, I'm going to add a trigger. Game trigger, and then I'm going to go to UI on button click take our button, put it here, and we're just going to go load scene. And we know we want to go to the main menu. All right, cool. All right, so we're good. Uh, main menu, hit that. So we can wait five seconds or 10 seconds, whatever, um, or we can just hit this button and it'll take us straight to where we're supposed to go. Great. All right, perfect. All right, that works for me. All right, so I'm going to hit save, and I'm going to go to project. All right, so what I'm going to do is go back to the levels. I'm going to go to base. All right, great. So we're in our base scene here. Great. I'm just going to go ahead and hit play, and let's take a look and see what's going on. All right, so our game started. Let's, assume, let's just assume we had an awesome cinematic screen and the, the story is all set up and we went and killed a couple enemies. 
and then that was great and then we fell off the cliff because we couldn't make the jump or something so we got to start over again and uh now we have two lives remaining it's like i got two more tries right that's the idea i think so i got two more tries to get it right but i don't get it right because i'm just gonna throw <laughs> i'm just gonna jump off the edge and um so now i have one remaining life that's it yeah that feels right so we got one life left man this is it this is for all the cookies oh great i grabbed a life so now we got two lives left so i gotta, I gotta die again um all right cool so now we have one life again left all right cool and here we go boom player go to game over screen <laughs> of course it's not gonna go to game over screen we didn't set up the game over screen all right let's do that all right so we got to go to the player sorry guys i forgot we got to go back to the prefab we got to go to the player and in the player we have to set up the the actual action for the level change so so we're going to do a scene change here we're going to go to game over um see this is why you got to make sure that you're naming everything right world menu game over all right cool so we need it to go to the game over scene. So cool. So this is going to go to the game over scene. We should be great. All right. Go back. And I'm going to leave the default, uh, the D log message there. And let's go ahead and hit play again and go through the whole death sequence. All right. All right. We're almost done here. Down to two. Got two lives left, two tries left. Ah, cool. All right, got two lives remaining. I got to do better next time. Uh, now we die. And eventually what I'll probably do is when we hit, like when we fall off, maybe I can do some to where like he blows up or maybe he destroys the object or destroys the player. But chances are you won't be able to see anything. Boom, game over. Now, that happened really quick. And we probably want to have some type of timer there. But it worked. And so it went to game over. I forgot to hit the button, which is great because it still took me back here. But it I just needed to last a little longer. But the good thing is, guys, it's working. And so we can always play with the timing later. All right, so I think that's it for this video. So I hope you guys are feeling uh, what we got going on here. It seems like we got... A good setup here I think it's not bad um, that's not gonna work because we need to actually have the game loaded for that quit button to actually quit the application so um, but yeah but other than that I think everything is working out pretty good and um, yeah so in the next video um, hopefully we can start maybe blocking out the intro scene or maybe think about the intro scene in terms of a cinematic maybe we'll use sin machine with a little bit of game creator to work and I can see that working. I think Sin Machine uses actions pretty easy. I think I've played with it before a long time ago. I just never created a tutorial about it. Um, but we'll, we'll see how that works out. Um, but other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and, uh, let me know if you guys have any questions. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks. Bye. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to stay up to date on the latest 3d platforming tutorial. Feel free to subscribe to the channel. If you'd like to support, you can find me on Patreon, or of course, you can hit me up on Discord. I like to talk about whatever project you guys are working on. Of course, thanks for hanging with me. Your support is always appreciated. As always, remember, never give up and keep moving forward. Peace.